If you've been entertaining the idea of using a smart lock in your rental property, long-term rental or short-term rental, the answer is yeah, you should do it. I finally found a smart lock that I like. And you can actually thank Haley for finding this one. We're gonna go over this smart lock, its advantages, its use case applications, like how we're gonna use it in our short-term rental business. So that way you can do the same if you want to kind of copy what I do. And that's what this whole channel is about, right? So in this video, let's talk about my newest favorite piece of technology, the Scifley Smart Lock. Welcome back, family. Yes, so here we go. My favorite Smart Lock today at this moment in time. And we've played with a lot of them. Right, and the thing about smart locks, it's not just about the lock, but it's about the like software as well. And that's a big factor here, and that's one of the reasons why I like these guys so much. And so in this case, the reason why Scifley smart locks win all around is it's a combination of price point, ease of install, what looks like to be durability, modularity in how you can install it, which is nice, the ease of use of the app, and the depth of the features of the app, all good. So the smart locks are about $110 as we speak on Amazon, I did reach out to the company to see if we can do some form of collaboration discount code. Very similar to how I do with Minute, right? If you guys buy a Minute home device from Minute directly with a promo code, it's Sean20, S-E-A-N-20, you get 20% off of infinite number of devices. And that's important, right? Because if you do this at scale, the devices matter. And Minute used to not have a membership and that's why I like them a bunch, but they're still better than NoiseAware because they have all these extra features like crowd detect and it monitors the temperature of your home and the humidity and stuff and NoiseAware just does noise. Minute is still better even though it still has a membership now, we still get a discount on the, on the tech, which is nice. So Scifley is $110 until I get a partnership with them. And if that happens, you'll see a link in the description for that partnership to get a discount. That would be super cool. But for now, there's no affiliation. I'm just telling you that I like them. I'm making this video anyway. When you unbox the Scifley, it's going to pretty much be in a way kind of assembled. They put the front and back together and then package it in a way that when you pull it out, if you pay attention, your brain's like, oh, I see how this goes, which is really nice. Now the bolt can be flipped left or right and it works either way. And this is really important because some door handles are only left or right, you know what I mean? This is like ambidextrous, which is cool because the handles actually come detached and then you put the front and back handles on when you're ready and you can flip them if you want. So everything's flippable, which is nice. It runs on four AA batteries and the app actually does tell you what power level the batteries are at, which is awesome. Getting the batteries in and out is really easy. There's a screw at the top to, to pull the plate out and then replace the batteries. That's also nice. After I installed about a half a dozen of these, I did time myself and full install, including taking off the current lock that exists and replacing a bolt lock with the Scifley door handle, it took me just over eight minutes and 30 seconds. And that was with an older door that had kind of a screwy screw that took me a little extra long to get out. And then of course I had to stop the recording because at that point it asks you to pair your app with the device. And then that takes about another 30 seconds. I mean, once you're logged into the app, adding a new lock is pretty simple. And so now at this point, what we have is we have this durable lock that's ambidextrous that you can make custom codes, and we're gonna get into that in a second, makes custom codes and it's all managed through a pretty easy app. If you're going to install a smart lock, just real, real quick tips, you'll need to make sure you have the right tools. I got an edge tool, basically like a paint scraper, because I had a feeling that some of these bolt locks would be stuck and I was right. The way that landlords like to paint over stuff, it sticks things to the door and I basically had to chisel out some piece of hardware to get the old locks off. So make sure you get, you know, a good screwdriver and make sure you get like an edge tool, like a paint scraper or like a, like a buck knife or something like that. Be able to get things off um, just in case they give you a hard time. Now it does come with all the hardware, like screws and stuff. It even comes with face plates for the, for the door jam, which is nice. I like to recycle stuff. So if the screws are good, when I pull the original hardware off, I'll just use the same screws and then just keep like a little baggie of the hardware that Scifley gives us just in case we need to replace them. And they give doubles of everything, which is really good. Once the lock is installed, and you connect it to the app through Bluetooth. You can create multiple passcodes, which is really cool. And what I like about this app is that you have the option of what kind of passcodes you wanna create. You name it and then it generates a random eight digit code. You can do timed codes where you give people a code for a period of time. And this is something that you could use for guest access. Now, I don't yet know if this API connects to anything, but I'll do my homework. But if you're still like us, where we don't use a platform management software because we really don't need it, we've got a team of people that do everything the right way, you can create temporary codes for your guests that work for very specific windows of time, and that's it. And then you can have permanent codes that are internal. So I have an internal housekeeping code, and then I have an internal code that I give for the building. The building needs access. And what'll happen is when somebody unlocks the door, the records will show 
when housekeeping and lock the door. If the building access to do, you know, fulfill a maintenance request, if the guest check or not, stuff like that. And so these will give us detailed entry logs, which will allow us to monitor building activity. If we terminated one housekeeper and they had access to all of our previous codes, then we'd have to generate 40 new codes for all of our doors. But instead of changing 40 locks and adding 40 new codes, we can just change 40 locks and add one new code. It's a lot easier for information management. And that's what we're gonna give shot for. And if we had to do the same thing because maintenance staff got changed out of the building, we could do the same thing and just change all the locks for property and just have one new maintenance code. And that's why I like Cyfly is because you have the ability to have multiple codes for multiple instances named and some are permanent, some are not. Now, this bad boy comes with features that we're not gonna use. You can do fingerprint scanning, which is super cool. You can use RFID cards, which is super cool. There's gonna be wireless access. You connect it with like Google or Alexa or anybody like that. That's also cool. If somebody has this app, you can send an e-key. You can also use remotes. Um, there's all sorts of different use cases for this lock. It comes with a bunch of interactivity. This hardware does connect to the internet, and that's why you're able to connect to like Google Home and stuff like that, because it's an IoT thing, internet of things. And so smart home technology all runs off of Wi-Fi, Z-Wave, stuff like that, but you know, once you're connected to Wi-Fi on this, you can then reach through the internet to a door and change codes for a door that you're not even nearby. But you can have housekeeping who has an app go near a door with Bluetooth if Wi-Fi is down and change codes and do unlocks through um, an app. And that's why the e-key could be really cool also is because if you don't wanna give somebody a code, but you want them to help you unlock a door in a pinch, you can actually make somebody who's a user have a one-time e-key code. But actually at Backpedal, you can create a one-time use passcode also. So you can actually create a one-time code and say, hey, Mr. Helper, here's one, two, three, four. It'll only work once. And so there's a lot of flexibility with this app. And there's also this just, you know, tap to lock, unlock, just click it. I can unlock this door right now. Super fun. So the reason why electronic locks are important is because keys get lost all the time. And then cutting new keys and managing keys can be a big deal. That's how break-ins can happen. Somebody can go make a copy of your key and then come back in and steal your stuff and you don't want that. And then having the same door code forever for guests, they can come back and unlock your door. You don't want that either. So you need some level of safety. And you can then make it so people's uh, codes stop working a certain period of time after checkout. It's just the way that it works and it's in your house rules. Be like, your door code will work until this time unless you have an authorized late checkout. And then you can actually change their code activity time to coincide with their checkout time. Super good stuff like that. These types of things will prevent people from squatting because the door will cease to work um, because that's just how it works. It'll prevent people from, you know, like basically holding over your property without permission. It'll prevent people from distributing a code and having locals break in. There's a lot of benefits to using e locks. Now, this one is good because it gives you the power level on your locks. I've seen ones that are multiple, like August locks were trash for the longest time. There's basically a keypad you put on the front and they put this wheel on the back. But what was cool about this is you're not materially changing the lock, so it allows you to get around some of the lease language where you can't modify the locks because you're just adding something extra and it's communicating with this drum behind the door. So August had a use case and it fit for a while, but that technology was really unreliable. It was no fun. Some others don't tell you when the batteries are low. So the batteries could die and you never knew and then getting into the property would be really tough. Now these do come with hard keys just in case the batteries die. I think all you know electric locks do that if they're smart, and, but these keys are actually really funky. They're, they're gonna be really hard to cut new copies of. Um, and that might be the only thing I'd be concerned about, but with the frequency of you're using these actual keys, like Mayday, the door is locked because the batteries are dead, you're probably never gonna use these keys, so just don't lose them. I think it's probably the most important aspect of this. And the last few pro tips for this topic matter, if you do arbitrage like me where you don't own the property, you'll need to get the landlord's permission to change the locks. You just absolutely have to. Now, if you're renting enough doors, getting permission to change locks won't be a big deal, especially if you have a solution where they can still have access. And that's why Cyphly is really good, is we're able to guarantee that we'll, they will never have a lapse of access with how we've set this up. We need to give them a hard copy of the key just in case the batteries die, you know, everybody's tails are covered, but that is a non-issue when you lease enough doors. Or you do single family homes, landlords are usually pretty cool with you replacing the lock. You just need to keep the old hardware. If you ever move out, you'll have to replace your lock with their old hardware, nothing missing. So what I did is I take the Cyphly boxes, I keep all of our 
like extra stuff, like the extra screws, any bits of hardware we didn't need in that box. And then in a bag, I kept all of the old buildings hardware in a bag in the same box. So if we ever move out, we just pull that Scythely box out, we put our Scythely away, and we take the old hardware and we put it back on. And life is good just like that. And that's just a consideration because leases do end. Um, eventually, if it's two years or five years later, whatever, you'll need to be able to replace that lot, otherwise it will cost you money. So if you have questions, by the time you ask some questions, I'll probably have some experience with these locks. So feel free to fire away, guys. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you on the other side.